Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. And happy Wednesday, guys. This is about to be a crazy episode because we are recapping Love is Wine season five. Woo! Like, it is, ooh, we have some huge thoughts about this newest season. So if you guys haven't watched yet, episodes one through four came out last Friday. So make sure you watch. But this is, I feel like this is going to be a crazy, crazy season because this is such a wild cast. Yeah, honestly, I think this is my favorite season so far. Is that, really? I don't know, that might be, I'm going on a limb to say this. Yeah, so far, it is my favorite season. I've been hooked every single episode. So, and I have so many thoughts. Ooh, I can't wait to get into it. Okay, for me, I don't think it's my favorite season. I mean, it's hard to tell because we're watching the, you know, like the early episodes yeah. of season five. But... I will say it has definitely got me hooked. Like yeah. after season four, I was like, why the hell doesn't Netflix like put all the episodes out here? Because I was dying to see the next episode. Yeah. I'll share my thoughts later on when we start recapping. What I'm struggling with is like, I'm not connecting with anyone from the cast. Mm. And I'll, I'll tell the reason why later. Yeah. It's interesting that you say that because for me, I feel like I have, I have some favorites, but I think you're right in the sense that this season is not really about that like fairy tale love story because I feel like there's a lot of baggage with every single person, at least that we're seeing I on agree. screen. Yeah, so it's going to be interesting. I can't wait to break it all down because there's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot. I know. So we're going to actually not do a life update today. Um, I have a few life updates, but I'm going to save that for a month from now once we're done <laughs> recapping because I want to get right into it. But before we get into our recap, I did want to share some love is wine news. Josh and Jackie from season four recently broke up and I was very mm. surprised by that. According to people.com, they broke up a little over two weeks after love is wine after the altar season four aired. Um, so we recapped that a few episodes ago. Um, and Jackie said on an Instagram live that the reason is Josh was upset at her for having a off camera recent conversation with Monica. We don't know what that conversation was about. It didn't say in the people.com article, but essentially that is what Jackie said via her Instagram live. And then Josh also put a statement out there just saying, you know, just confirming that they broke up um, and he wishes her the best. So what are your thoughts on that? Are you surprised by this news? Like, what are you thinking? Yeah, I, I am kind of surprised by it because I didn't think that that situation, like the Monica situation would have caused such a rift between them to the point where, you know, it ended their relationship, especially because they moved in together recently. So I feel like they were really invested in each other. But this is all I'm going to say about Jackie. After she came for us on our Instagram page, um, if you guys haven't seen it, she left some comments um, about our latest like uh, after the altar recap. And I don't know, after that situation, and listen, I've never talked to Jackie ever in my entire life, not even a comment or a message. And so for her to come at me, I think was just so uncalled for considering you're on a reality TV show. And there is multiple, multiple people that are going to be speaking about your situation. That is the nature of the game. And that's exactly what we did on this podcast. And I don't know, the response that we got from her and the comments that we got were just, I don't know, it just left a really bad taste in my mouth. Where I was really confused is during our After the Altar recap, we didn't really say anything bad about Jackie. Jackie actually said it in her Instagram comment on our Out of the Pods Instagram page. She says that she was mad at us for um, the comment we made about Josh's comment to Monica about Monica's body during their reveal. Um, essentially, mm -hmm. what Josh said was, you're thicker than a bowl of oatmeal to Monica, implying that yeah. she's like thick or like, I don't know if that means like curvy or a little yeah. bit bigger. It's and so known, I had said, I was going to say, it's yeah. not a known like statement. Like it's, you know what I mean? It's not like a daily used like phrase. <laughs> Yeah. So I said, like, I don't think any comments about like a woman's body like that is like appropriate, especially when you're like first meeting them. And Jackie took offense. And that's why she wrote her comments. Mm. Um, and she said, well, it's from a popular vine. And I was like, what? I, I don't know what vine, vine hasn't is. Been, vine hasn't been a thing for a long, long, long time. <laughs> 
Yeah. She's like, no, that phrase was taken from a, a vine. But I was like, well, the show didn't make that clear. And I've never seen that vine before. And like, also vine is not you. So anyways, um, Jackie, also a part of that Instagram comment made up a lie saying that I told cast members that I had a conversation with her when I asked her who those people were like to tag them publicly in our comments. I was like, if you're going to make a public statement like that, like, let us know, because it's not like you're DMing me to clear it up. Um, she tagged Shane, my ex. Bruno, I don't know who that is, but it looks like he's her personal friend. And Keisha, which I was surprised about because I've never talked to Keisha in my life. And she even DM'd us asking like, hey, can I come on the pod type of thing? And so, and she was very friendly um, and very nice. And so, I don't know. It was weird that, first of all, she lied. What really bugged me is she ended up on Instagram Live and made fun of your name, Deep D. She's kept yeah. calling you deputy, which is a form of racism. The fact she's making fun of an ethnic name. Yeah. Like she kept saying it over and over again, like she couldn't pronounce your real name. And I was like, I that's when I lost all respect for Jackie. And I thought to myself, I was like, she, you're not a good person in my eyes. Like, sorry, yeah. you're just not someone that I respect enough to, you know, have a conversation with anymore. I mean, we can't, cause she blocked us anyways, or blocked me in the out of the pods page. Um, but mm -hmm. to make fun of your name like that is not okay. And quite honestly, who the fuck do you think you are, Jackie? So you know what? I used to root for her a little bit. And and I think now I root for her in a way of like, I hope you just learn to be a better person. I think yeah. that it was just surprising how erratic she became in the comments and yeah. um, how she said she's going to ride and die for her man. And then this happens. And um, yeah. I was like, I hope you find your happiness, but I also hope that you heal in terms of like the person you are. And I hope you know that like you were exhibiting like a form of racism when you made fun of Deep D's name. And I also hope that you learn something for being called out for lying. And also it's interesting because we were being supportive of her. We were like rooting for her and said the nicest things. So for it to come left field like that is just... Oh, it's, I don't understand it, but, and I never will. <laughs> yeah. So that's the update and like kind of our story and interaction we have with Jackie and why we feel the way we do about this news. But also it goes to the bigger picture of like, was she impacted because we are from Love is Blind and we're talking about her on our podcast. I kind of understand her view, but at the end of the day, you did a reality TV show in that mm -hmm. you know that many, many people, millions of people are going to talk about your relationship. Exactly. Yes. The relationship you had on the show. We went through it where we had season one cast members talk about us, season two, whether it was on YouTube, another podcast, through TikTok. And so... um it kind of is the name of the game, but Deep D and I started this podcast to share, like in in some instances, like humanize the reality TV show experience. And so, but I guess like I kind of understand her, but on the other thought, it's like, hey, you chose to go on TV and show your relationship out there to be talked about. Yeah. And it's also about how you react to things that says a lot about who you are. Now on to season five. Ooh, okay. I don't even know where to start with a recap, but I just want to ask you, Deep D, like, what are your general thoughts of episodes one through four? I don't even know how to summarize it. I have so many <laughs> fucking thoughts. I will say one thing I noticed is the editing in these first four episodes were kind of all over the place. Like usually yeah. I'm able to like follow a timeline with every single couple and be like, okay, they're in this stage, this stage. But like in these four episodes, first of all, all four episodes were in the pods, which was insane. But I, but like, did you, I was just so confused on like when things were happening because like you, in like you see people get engaged and the reveal and then it jumps to pods again and then back and forth and back and forth. So I'm just like, my brain was like, how is this all fitting together? Like, did you get that vibe? Yeah. Um, and I have a theory around that because I know some tea about this season that I can't reveal yet. Oh yeah. It's pretty big, but, um, my theory about why there's so much content in the pods is because I know some tea, some juicy tea that I can't reveal until later. later. Um, yeah. Not in this episode, but like maybe in a later episode. Um, but I think 
the producers are just trying to extend footage. So season three and four had 12 episodes, but the season only has 10 episodes, which is pretty surprising because typically, you know, the opposite happens where, you know, as seasons happen, there's more episodes per season or they try to keep to, you know, the previous season's amount Mm -hmm. of episodes. And so um, I assume that like there is some sort of struggle to extend footage because they had to cut some stuff out. Yeah, no, that makes total sense. And we see it by the end of these four episodes. It's like there's only three engaged couples. And so, you know, it, there's not that much footage in the last like few episodes of like Mexico weddings, like meeting the family, everything. You know what I mean? There's not that many couples yeah. to go off of. I know. Oh, but man. it seems that um, it seems that Chris and Johnny come back. Yeah. And. Uche and um, Aaliyah also come back at some point, like yeah. in the season five preview. So um, I don't know if like one of those, I don't know if both or one of those couples will make it to the altar as well. In addition to the three that got engaged, but we'll have to see. I feel like there's, I feel like they're obviously going to come back and have some moments, but I don't think that they're going to have all of the, you know, family meetups and like, mm -hmm. I don't think it's going to be like a Zach and Bliss situation where they get reengaged. Like, I don't think that that's going to happen this season, but again, we never know. I was thrown for so many curveballs in this, in these first four episodes. So you never know what can happen. Yeah. Um, so uh, I know I said earlier that I couldn't relate to the cast of the season. Mm -hmm. And I think the biggest reason why is you're right. There isn't like this love story to root for really anyone to root for. Mm -hmm. I feel like typically in the past seasons, the show edited people into these box characters. Like you kind of knew who was going to get an unfavorable edit or like be the villain of the season. You knew who was going to be super messy or who was going to be, you know, the, the couple to root for or like the more the person to root for, but mm -hmm. you don't get that with any of these people. They're all very complex characters, which I do kind of like, cause I think that's reflective of real life and who people are. Like we're not these like boxed people. Yeah. Um, however, I think from like a TV show perspective, it's hard to like really root for anyone from my perspective. I do mm -hmm. have favorites though. Yeah. Um, I do really like Izzy. I think all the women like Lizzie. Let's I, be real. I, I love Izzy. I think he's my favorite so far. I, um, and I also really like Stacy, but I wasn't always like that. That was like mm -hmm. a recent thing that yes. happened starting in like episode three for me. But I didn't like yeah. her in the first two episodes, but then I like came to love her. Me too. I, I liked some of the conversations that she had. It made me really fall in love with her. <laughs> fall in love with mm -hmm. her but um another one of my favorites was Aaliyah though I think um she just had a lot of she's been through some shit on this show <laughs> and I just love the way she handled herself and I just really respect her and the decisions that she made so I can't wait to get into it later Ooh, what yeah. a roller coaster well, let's dude. start with Aaliyah okay, like because I feel like she was in the middle of a lot of freaking drama Poor in these girl. episodes um, well, first off, let me just say this about Leah. I do really like her as well. Mm -hmm. There's something about like the way she just holds herself and her voice, um, the way she communicates that just seems very nice. The thing that bothered me is when she revealed she cheated on her ex-boyfriend, but yeah. she hadn't told him yet. But also the fact that she cheated on her boyfriend and then stayed with him for three more months until they broke up. Like that really bothered me. And I think the fact is that he, she most likely put his sexual health at risk. Like the way mm. she comes saying is like, I'm a changed person and trying to kind of like, I do think that Uche, the way he was communicating his concerns, like the tone of his voice and everything like that was very condescending and the delivery was not okay. But I think the questions were valid. They and were on I point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, of course you would want to know that when you are thrown with that information, like you're falling in love with someone and you need to figure out, like, can you see yourself getting engaged to this person? But I, I do think she was in the wrong with the whole situation and still with the way she viewed the situation where she was kind of like, um, trying to like excuse herself for it. Like yeah. she kept saying, well, like you, you weren't in my shoes. Like, you know, like, 
I've learned I'm not that type of person, but you know, this is why I did it. And I was like, no, it's not okay. It's like a really gross situation. Like you should have just been like, you're in the wrong. And and the fact that he, her ex-boyfriend is going to find out that, that she cheated through the show, I think is really hurtful. And I hope she can like have a conversation with him and be like, I'm sorry for that. But I, I, I do, I admire her in the sense that like, I think she does know that it was wrong. And I think she, you're right. Like, I, I wish she didn't make an excuse for it, but I hope like through the conversation with Uche, she realized that it wasn't okay. And like, to the point of like, don't excuse the behavior. I think Aaliyah, the way that she went about it was like making excuses. I didn't like the fact that she made an excuse, but I really truly think that she learned from that situation. And like she's grown from it. I just think that she was trying to make Uche understand her perspective. Like, hey, I know it wasn't okay for me to do it, but put yourself in my shoes. Like, this is why it was really tough for me. And I'm not proud of it. Like, I, I kind of respected that, but 100% sent, like, uh, 100%. I agree with you in the sense that Uche asked the perfect questions. Every single question was so valid. And I think it takes time for people to process when they hear hard, hard, like truths. And I don't think he was condescending in any way. I've read a lot of comments where people are like, oh my God, he's a red flag. I can't believe he's so judgmental. Um, yada, yada, yada. But I, I truly think that like, I would be kind of upset in that situation too, because I don't know. This is a question I have for you because me and my sister got into a very healthy debate about this. Do you <laughs> believe in the fact that once a cheater, always a cheater? And also, do you think that you would ever, or do you think that two years is a long time to get over like somebody cheating or is it a short amount of time? I don't think once a cheater is always a cheater. I think mm -hmm. for Aaliyah's, I think, though, in Aaliyah's case, the way she kind of justified why she did it, and I feel like what she thinks she learned from it, she actually didn't. Like, she hasn't even told her ex-boyfriend yet. I know. Like, yeah. that's, like, fucked up because I was like, sorry, it's the piece where she didn't tell her ex-boyfriend and, like, she also put her sexual health in risk and can't recognize that. And the fact now she's saying it on a very public reality TV show, I think I don't believe that she really learned from it. It's, it felt like she was still justifying it. Look, I've been in a situation <laughs> where like similar to hers, not that I cheated, but we're like, you know, like the sex life of it wasn't very good. But mm -hmm. I think cause I've been in, in her shoes at one point, I would just never have done what she did. And I hope that if I had done what she did, I would have been very honest to that person and not put their sexual health at risk. Yeah, I think Uche's point was very valid, though, in the sense that she didn't have to disclose what she said. I think yeah. that does show a lot that she I think she's carrying the guilt of not telling her ex-boyfriend. I, I like I'm not excusing her behavior in any way, but I just think that we're all human and yeah. we can learn to grow. But I, I do understand where she effed up. And I, I actually, after I saw that scene, I started looking at her differently because she has been my favorite through and throughout. And after I learned that fact, I was like, oh, girl, why are you giving me a reason not to like you? Like, not that I don't like her. I still think she's one of my favorites. But um, yeah. And I kind of want to get into Uche and his double standards, his fucking, oh, dude, like he expects honesty and like all this truthfulness, but he hasn't been very honest either. I felt like it was no, very yeah. judgmental. Like, no, um, I agree. Right? I 100% like, agree. Sir. Like during that conversation when he also says like, yeah, I cheated too when I, but it was when I was 18. It was just kissing. I was like, okay, bro, you also cheated. Don't act like you're like above it all of a sudden. I do think that there are different levels of cheating. However, I'm like, don't act like you're this high and mighty person and you're judging her so hard when you've also done the same thing. I think they're both very much in the wrong. I think he's still very much condescending. I think he asked the right question, but he did it in such a condescending <laughs> tone that yeah. it was kind of like also gross to watch. Like it felt like an interrogation versus like, let me try to like understand. It was more like, well, why? And like 
here's the thing. There's another layer. I know this is hard for viewers to understand, but when we have conversations in the pods, we try to be very understanding and not be so pointed in -hmm. the questions we ask. We know that everyone is being a little bit careful on camera. Like I remember I had a conversation with Shane and we were talking about politics and he was a little bit nervous about talking about his political beliefs. And I was like, let's table it. Like I get it. We're on camera. You don't want it to be shown on camera. We'll just have like a separate off camera conversation about it when it gets there. And if it's going to be an issue in our relationship at that point, then like we're done, you know, like that type of thing. So I was like, Uche, I don't know. Like you, you weren't being very understanding of like the total situation of I get why you're asking the questions, but it's your tone, dude. And you're, it feels gross. I don't know. I was just like, yeah, it's like a holier than thou type of mentality. But I think at the same time, he was like, I don't know. I just feel like he was trying to process it. And like, he could have been better about helping her understand how that what she did was wrong and not excusable. But, uh, but I wasn't talking about the whole, uh, him cheating and it comparing. I'm talking about the Lydia situation. Baby. <gasps> I know we're going to jump right fucking into it because that's what irked me the most was that he was asking Aaliyah to be honest and how that is a deal breaker for him but he didn't tell her about the whole Lydia situation I think that is the biggest betrayal of all time like honestly truthfully I think it's more on Lydia's part but also as a potential partner of hers and a future husband to be like are you kidding me like bro like you really dropped the ball on that well I also thought it was really weird that he brings it up, which I, I understand like in terms of timing, like why he would bring it up when he did, but he withhold the fact that him and Lydia slept together three months prior three to months filming. Ago. Thank you. And he's like, I'm over her, like blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, bro, you literally three months ago, you literally slept with her. When Uche and Aaliyah were talking about the whole Lydia situation, it turned so sentimental. Like from his end, he was like crying and was like, oh my gosh, like Lydia is a great friend. Like I saw a lot of qualities in her that would be make a great mother, all of these things. It kind of felt like there was some emotion there and it makes fucking sense considering they just had sex three months ago. They hooked up three months ago and he conveniently left that part out or they edited it out. That's kind of what I had like in the back of my mind because all of these scenes were kind of all over the place. One, I was curious to know when, when did he actually tell her like at what point? Because I was like, did he wait a long time or did it happen like, sooner than later like to proposing time like that the timeline wise is kind of confusing to me and also why did he leave out these details that's these are all the questions that i have and can i say one thing i was creeping on the comments on the love is blind instagram page and i noticed that uche left a message and was like heavily producer edited footage or something like that right i saw that too and I was yeah like, I'm really curious to know what was edited and what was not, you know? So I don't know, dude, that, but you know what, for the purpose of this podcast, I feel like let's talk about it face value and then we can kind of get into the editing piece to see if it like is an actual factor. Yeah. You know? To be honest, I think he actually withheld from Aaliyah that him and Lydia slept together because she goes back in and confronts him about it and be like, yeah. Lydia told me you guys slept together three months ago. Mm -hmm. and so i don't know but lydia is also man bro oh uh lydia also confuses me like yeah i think i don't know how much uche was in the wrong with not telling Aaliyah about lydia because i kind of get it like if you don't want your connection to be impacted. I mean, Milton said it too. He goes, if I knew you were dating or slept with Uche in the beginning, I probably wouldn't have continued our relationship. Like I probably yeah. would have ended it. So like yeah. on one hand, I get it. Cause you don't want it to impact your connections and how you build connections. You don't want people to have like preconceived notions about you. And it is mm-hmm. a little bit weird knowing that like Milton can also talk about you to Uche and you don't know what Uche is going to say in the men's lounge, that type of thing. Exactly. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. There's just like very confusing because like Uche and Lydia have like conflicting versions of what happened. Like how yeah. Uche says, he was the one that ended it with Lydia. He had no feelings. And then Lydia was like, no, I was the one who had to like step away from it. 
it's very like what what, it's, it's what what's the story yeah but Lydia is definitely in the wrong in this situation for getting herself so close with Aaliyah knowing the fact that Aaliyah was building a connection with Uche and you know Lydia had this like huge secret and was like making comments pushing Aaliyah and like you know like making comments like oh you're too good for him blah 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 yeah I see myself in you you are we're the same person that conversation when I first watched it was absolutely the most co confusing moment on the first four episodes during the first yeah. four episodes but i do have to say i am i do agree that withholding the information that they dated was crucial to them meeting potential new partners but i think like the timing of when they disclose that information is very very important like i feel like I, that's why I'm so confused about the timeline. Like, when did this actually happen? Yeah. Because that's what's going to determine if I think Uche and Lydia did something wrong or not. But I, I do have to say, Lydia, I feel like it was a little calculated for her to get close to Aaliyah. I feel like she did it on purpose. I don't know if she subconsciously did it or purposefully did it, but for her to be that close and to be one of her best friends where Aaliyah is saying, oh, she's going to be a great aunt to my future kids. Like what? Like I feel yeah. like she purposefully placed herself in Aaliyah's life to understand what's happening with her and Uche. And in my situation, like in, if it were me and I was Lydia, I would try to maintain distance and also I would not be giving my advice on their relationship knowing I agree that she knows them. Yeah. Like, yeah, it just seems a little fishy to me. Like, and it sucks because Lydia was one of my favorites starting out, but like towards the end of episode four, I just, I'm like, man, I really want to love you, but I just feel like there's some manipulation and some calculated moves happening. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like when I think about Lydia as a character on the show, I was like, I feel like she's not capable of like that type of manipulation, but mm -hmm. it is very manipulative. Like Lydia, you kept a huge, if Aaliyah was, you guys like loved each other, like we're so close as you guys say on the show, like how dare you, Lydia, keep that secret from your friend knowing like she's dating him and then also giving advice knowing that you're being biased like that's mm -hmm. just like very wrong in my eyes and um it was tough like watching Aaliyah talk about how much she loves Lydia and how Lydia is going to be the aunt of the children well first of all I was like you guys have only known each other for a few days like please, those friendships will definitely fall apart after a few oh, years 100%. like let's be for real but um it kind of shows how much behind the scenes like Lydia got close to Leah and exactly. that, makes me, get, that gives me an icky feeling about Lydia. Yeah. Like, that's not okay. And not to mention also the conversation that Lydia had with Aaliyah when they found out. Remember that initial conversation? The tail end of that conversation was very hard to watch. Like, where she's like, oh, like, he drives a Tesla. Did you know his favorite color is blue? Like, all of those things. I felt like Lydia was saying those things to be like, hey, by the way, like I'm close to Uche too. In fact, I think I know him way more than you do. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know why that felt so, I, it just felt it so uncomfortable. Yeah. It's hundred percent so many boundaries. So I felt like during that moment we watched, we watched the friendship end, you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? I like, know. oh, poor Leah. She's been through it this, this season. I, I feel really bad for her. Oh, yeah. Man. Okay, but I am going to play like devil's advocate. I'm okay. going to straight up say it. I'm not a fan of Lydia right now. So I'm not like playing devil's advocate to like, you know, like try <laughs> to root for her or like try to support yeah. her in any way. But two things. I think the reason why she comforted Aaliyah a lot is because that's kind of what some women did like during our season is anytime someone's like crying or having a hard time like you see a bunch of women rush over to like comfort you know that person and it's really more of like a camera tactic because you want to show like oh you're a good person you're a good friend you're there for people instead of just like sitting back and just like you know like moseying around and mm -hmm. so i feel like that's like lydia's thing where you you also see her very much like in the background scenes or something she's always like comforting someone um, yeah, I and she's kind of right. like everywhere. So I was like, is it more of like the cameras are on and you want to be that person that 
com- like is like that comforting friend. And so you go like above and beyond than what you typically would in real life, that type of yeah. thing. That's what, like one of my thoughts. My other thing is that conversation between Lydia and Aaliyah, where Lydia is telling Aaliyah, like, this is Uche's favorite color. He lives in a three-story house, all that stuff. It seemed very edited. Like, I'm not sure if it was as mm. bad as it was in real life, because every time you see Aaliyah, like a uh, camera on her, she's like in a different pose really quickly. I don't know how to explain it. So I'm yeah. curious to see if it was like Lydia was as annoying in that scene as she actually was. Like how yeah. Aaliyah really felt about Lydia telling her that stuff. That was my, I don't know. That was just my two yeah. things about that. That's an interesting observation. But like even with editing, she still said those things. Yeah, true. And it's like, and Aaliyah specifically said to Lydia, I don't want to know. You know what I mean? I don't want to know these things. You know what I mean? So I just don't know if like, even with editing, uh, I just have a hard time wrapping my head around the fact that she said those things and how inappropriate it was. Like, yeah. it just felt like she was trying to create doubt in Aaliyah's mind that this should, that she should like progress the relationship. And that's what we see happening. Like, the fact that Aaliyah didn't show up to her proposal was the bombshell of this these four seasons or these four episodes. Oh, I know. I was like, what? Like, not even an explanation? <laughs> That's Ooh. why I was like dying to see episode five. I was like, why yeah. the hell did she not show up? Or why the hell did she leave? Like, decide to go home? Like, what? I feel like the last time we saw Uche and Aaliyah, they were like, Fine. Fine. And then all of a sudden she's like, bye. See ya. Yeah. <laughs> she says, we'll get through this. It's okay. We're going to be fine. Like they laugh. I wonder if there was a behind the scenes conversation with Lydia that happened maybe, or she thought about it more. I have no idea, yeah. which is why I need to know timelines, dude. These timelines are just killing me. I, I don't know. even know. I was thinking in my yeah. head though, I kind of chuckled at that scene, which is like really terrible of me because I, Uche just seems like he was in shock, but you know, the producers probably knew well in advance. She left mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, go yeah. in that pod, Uche. And he's like, do, 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 like getting ready to yeah. propose. They oh, probably, and- he's probably practicing his proposal speech and the producers oh. are looking like, damn, you're so Didn't fucked because you're going in that pod and she already left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the fact that they poetically left the journal that she gave, that he, Uche gave Aaliyah and it was like, placed in the pod he was like wait what i do have to say i loved the poem that he wrote her it was so so sweet it was good it was a good poem i was like oh my gosh but now you that know, i know I his poems. little condescending tone of voice i'm like i don't know it probably his poem would have been like hey 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 i don't know <laughs> like, i like uche are you a recent cheater a lot of people are calling him <laughs> out for um just just, they're just calling him out saying like he's a red flag like i'm glad she's not with him but i don't think he's all that bad like like he couldn't have expected to see his ex in the pods you know like but i I think it's more than that i don't know if i'm projecting onto him though having had dated a person who kind of did the same thing to me and it came out to be like a very toxic relationship and so i see like similarities between him and that person i dated and so it's like i'm getting that like vibe of like something makes me like shudder Mm -hmm. no i get that I, i i understand where you're coming from in the sense that like he was a little bit judgmental and kind of acted like he would never make mistakes. But the problem is he did make a mistake. You know what I mean? Like in not being truthful to to Aaliyah. But can we just really talk quickly talk about um, Milton and Lydia? Because the story that Lydia, the version of the story that Lydia told Milton about how he, she knew um, Uche, Like, why did she conveniently leave out the fact that they had slept together three months ago? She said, three months ago, I decided to end it. You're literally leaving out a really big fact that could change, like, change Milton's perception of this relationship. Like, I just thought that she was very calculated. Like, she had so many details for, to give to Aaliyah and she left out conveniently those details for Milton. And I thought that was like very odd. Unless they edited it out. I always have in the back of my mind, did they edit it out? Did they edit it out? But looking at it face value, I thought that was kind of fucked up. 
Yeah, if it wasn't edited out and she withheld that information from Milton but told Aaliyah about it, yeah, that's kind of messed up. She's not being fully honest. I also feel like based on the timeline on the show, it felt mm -hmm. like she only told Milton because Aaliyah had found out. So, like, if word was getting around, I feel like she she was like, oh, it's time to tell Milton. Like, in my head, I was like, was she ever planning on telling Milton or is it because Uche had told Aaliyah? Yeah, exactly. I don't Dude, know. This, so it's a hot mess. Like that whole situation was a hot mess. But between the cheating stuff and then the Lydia thing, like I just feel like the Uche and Aaliyah have really been through it. Like we could talk about them forever. There's so much yeah. to dissect. I feel like I know. I uh, I think that is one couple or one what would have been couple. Mm -hmm. um, Uche and Aaliyah that I'm very curious in terms of like the conversations that they have in next week's up in this week's episodes that are coming out this Friday because they that was such a great cliffhanger I'm not gonna lie um, so good. but yeah I mean poor Milton though I feel like he's 24 oh. first of all and I feel like he's so he gives this like very like I don't want to use the word naive but you're kind of just going through life because you're like a little bit like well, innocent when it comes to love. I do get that kind of feeling from him where he a little baby. It's just kind of like, yeah, he's like a little baby. He's just kind of like, hey, oh, baby. like here I am. I feel like he's one of the youngest contestants that Love is Blind has ever had. Yeah, I can't I talk about so. season one, but I know uh, from season two to five, he's definitely the youngest man on the show. Yeah, I think so. Because how old was Giannina? Well, she was pretty young when she did the show. She's 25. 25 so i think that's like the closest yeah yeah you're totally right he's young but the fact that he he is such a little baby the the, the whole conversations surrounding geology and rock formations with milton and lydia i thought was so cute i was like whoa you didn't expect this type of like commonality i guess you could say but yeah. um yeah, it was an interesting, uh, it was an interesting pair up. I did not think that they were going to end up together because I felt like Lydia just picked Milton after Izzy had turned her down. And I was like, oh, poor Milton. Felt like that too. I feel like Lydia just settled on Milton. Again, I can't tell if it's the edit or not. You know, just yeah. like our season, it, it looked like, you know, Shane was my only option, but I had like three others. So I can't mm -hmm. tell if it's like, it's edited What's, in, yeah, yeah. like, in a certain way, but mm -hmm. I do really like Milton. I'll actually put him in my favorites list. I feel like he gives this like air of yeah. innocence and he kind of goes with the flow. I yeah. think the information that Lydia gave him, he was trying to be as honest as he could with like how he was feeling, but I kind of liked how he was all like, ah, uh, he kind of gave like a, it is what it is. He like really yeah. heard her out. Um, but I don't know if that also is like, says a lot of more that his like, of just being naive, you know, like you don't really know what to ask or like see it as like a red flag. Yeah, I think the way Milton processes things, I, I think like I kind of admired it. And, you know, Stacy said it best to in her advice to Lydia was like, hey, this is a big shock. Like, let him take a moment to process it, because remember, he um, exposed this personality trait about himself that he is a br more reserved and he needs to, like, think about things and he would rather listen and, like, figure it out before he opens his mouth. Kind of that kind of vibe. So I, I think he genuinely acted in the way that he normally would. Um, and I thought that was very mature of him. He's like, let me take a minute to like really process and think about this and see if it affects our relationship or not. And, you know, yeah. I, I like that she, he walked away. Yeah. I, I feel like this couple will not work out though. <laughs> Is that bad to say? No, I, I just, between the age gap and these issues and the fact that I feel like Milton is going to find out later that they had actually slept together, Uche and uh, Lydia, three months ago, I think that's going to factor in and there's going to be some complications. <laughs> yeah, I also feel like Lydia held back the fact that she told Uche during their first date in the pods, like when they realized they had dated in, in the past, how... Mm -hmm. I think she goes like, is this a sign like we should start again, like start from ground zero and get to know each other? So I feel like she's Ooh, kind of downplaying that like there's still feelings there on her end. Yeah. That's how I took her comment to Uche when she said that, like, is this like a sign we should start from ground zero type of thing? And Uche says no, yeah. but I don't know. It, I feel like when you say that to someone, it's like there's a chance like we could probably start again. 
Yeah. And, and I also think- one big thing. Do you think producers knew that Uche and Lydia had dated in the past? I say no. I say no, too, because on our season, I knew one of the guys from he went to college with me, Vito. And so I feel like maybe they just didn't do a check. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I maybe it just happened to be so because I went to Uche's Instagram and Lydia's to try to see if they had any pictures together or anything. I don't know if they wiped them or not, but I I just don't think that they did that level of digging. I just think yeah, they I interviewed agree. them, right? And they were like, actually, you guys are good for casting. And then maybe they found out later because the first date, they found out on the first date. So yeah. then producers were just like, ooh, we hit a gold mine here. You know what I mean? And no, they were like, we're going to go with it. I agree because I think about Kyle and Kara on our season. Producers didn't yes. know that Kyle and Kara hung out like they were friends. Mm-hmm. And then Kyle and Kara found out that they're both in the experiment when they went on their first pod date together. Same with exactly. Joey and I. Like Joey from our season and I had mutual yeah. friends. And when we started talking, we realized like we knew each other prior. So yeah. I don't think that they knew each other. I don't think that producers like manipulated it where they ended up together in the experiment because when they ask about our dating histories during casting, we don't give any names. All we give is the duration and age of the person that we dated. We don't even give, I don't think we even give the years or like the actual months that we dated someone. It's just like 2017 and 2018. I dated someone for like three months. Um, And they asked you like what type, like what kind of, what type of person are you into? Like that kind of thing. But it wasn't any specifics. Like I did not give my ex's names or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. Never gave my ex's name. There's no way them to find out my ex's. And obviously on our season, there were some men that we knew on the other side. And so it does happen. It just naturally happens. And in this case, it was two exes. Houston, we have lots of problems with this season. (laughs) (laughs) That's for sure. But I am very curious how Lydia Milton will work out. I never think age is really a problem, but it comes to like the maturity of each person. And I feel like Lydia is a little immature for a 30 year old in terms of how she's portrayed on the show. But Milton also seems like very young, just the way he's acting. So I'm curious to see like if they're going to have any issues with like, their maturity in the later uh, episodes. Yeah, he literally asked Lydia, hey, do I need to ask permission to go and play Wii with my friends? Like what? Okay, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Milton. Hello. No, Milton. No, you just go. That yeah. was so funny. I know he was trying to make a joke, though. It wasn't like a serious thing, but I just thought that was so funny. But I do. OK, but I want to go back to your point really quickly about Lydia. Um I really do think that she still has a lot of feelings for Uche and she's just denying them. I think she was very hurt by the fact that he broke up with her. And like, I I just feel it in my bones that like there's going to be some conversations had between those two, especially because in the teaser, remember there uh, you hear Uche saying, it feels like you're trying to get back together with me or something like that. Something along those lines. I don't know who he was talking to, but it feels like there's going to be some drama there well we'll just have to see this friday Mm. i can't Um, wait speaking about izzy let's go with izzy and johnny i was surprised he chose stacy and not johnny but i didn't really like izzy and johnny together at first it made sense because they were both being very vulnerable and they both came from very like it seems like unhealthy Mm. relationships like trauma they had trauma yeah from their previous relationships i don't know if i could call it trauma but they definitely they had it felt like they developed some like maybe they they were in unhealthy relationships Mm -hmm. however um i feel like johnny was always trying to convince izzy why they would be a good match instead of like kind of letting it naturally occur how like Izzy and Stacy met like it just he's just like one day it was like wow like yeah you know I really understood Izzy's perspective on why he picked Stacy because I think with Johnny he could understand her so well and was like very much able to have this deep connection with her because they really bonded over like again, past things that have happened in their lives they both were in really serious relationships in the past and you know they were able to connect. But I think why Izzy picked Stacy, and I see it now after watching the last episode, was the fact that um, 
Stacy's fun and she's like lively and upbeat. And he, I think she helps him forget about all of those trauma things. You know, like when you have two very, very like hurt people, there's still a lot of healing that needs to be done. And I think it can be triggering sometimes. And so I think maybe that's why he went with Stacy and their connection was like very real. I don't know. I, I kind of understood it, but I did not appreciate okay johnny was my favorite i say this all the time i feel like all these characters were like i was really uh into them and then i see their character progression and i'm just like ooh, that's some questionable behavior <laughs> yeah but johnny i just hate how she flip-flopped when izzy broke it off with her he, she was so gung-ho on him and i felt like she should have just left but for her to string along chris in the way that she did and give him like a conflicting story of what she's feeling was it just didn't sit well with me no i agree i think the way yeah. the show was edited it made it seem like johnny just went back to chris because she wanted to just progress to the next stage of the experiment which is you know going to mexico and continue filming and so when izzy broke up with her it was more like well let's go back to chris so in yeah. that way i don't think it was fair um the yeah. one thing that I didn't appreciate that Johnny did was when she makes assumptions about Stacy being the safe choice for Izzy <gasps> and assuming that, that they're just having fun. I was like, that's not fair because that's what Shayna did with Shane and I. Um, yeah. It's tough though, because I think in Shayna's case, she was hearing things from her producers and like kind of being fed lies. So I don't know if that's what's happening with Johnny and that's why she's making those assumptions yeah. and it's making her feel very like strongly like, Oh my gosh, he's not realizing like I'm the more serious choice and we have a future. So um, I don't want to like, you know, like judge her too hard yet. knowing yeah. that she yeah, kind of went through the same thing. But the comment, Natalie, that she made about how she was like, oh, they're not going to last longer than a month. Or was that someone else? I don't know. No, someone else. Was. Someone yeah. else. But she agreed with it. And like, and then she kind of had those two comments to say about Izzy, about his credit score and oh, like yeah. kind of bashing him. And so I just was like, I understand though. I get it. Johnny was probably hurt by the whole situation, but that's exactly why I feel like for her to go back to Chris and kind of string him along, even though I don't think her heart was completely in it was really hard to watch. And I am so, 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 so proud and respect Chris so much for his decision to walk away from her. I truly think that was the best thing that could have happened. Um, although I do I wish Johnny the best. Yeah, I do wish Johnny the best. I think like she really, truly like deserves love, of course. But I don't think that it was a tactic for her to continue on and go to Mexico. I think she really just wants to be loved and she wants to find that partner. And she's just like looking for anyone to fulfill that role when Izzy broke up with her. And the next best person yeah. is Chris. I actually agree with that. Like, I think that there are comments where the editing makes her look like she settled back with Chris because she just wants to get engaged. But I think it's yeah. more so coming from a place where she's, it is kind of confusing because she does see Chris as a safe choice, but is the safe choice, the right choice. And she's struggling with that. Um, and yeah. you're right. I think she just wants to find love and be loved. Her and Lydia mm -hmm. say that a lot, but I think my, yeah. my, um, advice to them is like, don't cry about wanting to be loved, you know, like work on loving yourself. I feel like that's kind of yeah. dangerous when you're in a situation of trying to find someone is when you're like desperate for love because it kind of clouds yeah. your judgment. Um, mm -hmm. and I think that's in Lydia's case as well. And it might be for Johnny's a little bit, but, um, yeah, I think you're right. I think that people saying that she kind of just settled for Chris or like, you know, went back with him to kind of like move on on TV. I don't think that's the case. Um, yeah. But for Johnny's piece, like going back to her and the comments she made about Stacy and Izzy after he broke up with her about him having a low credit score. The thing is, I think those are things that like even we tell ourselves when we're going through a breakup and we see, you know, like our ex moving Justifying on to another girl. It. Like we just, you know, mm -hmm. like 
as a way to just like make ourselves feel better. 100%. It just sucks when you say it out loud in front of the cameras on a TV yes. show. Like it's not a exactly. good Exactly. That's exactly the same thought that I had. I think she was just justifying it in her mind to make herself feel better about the situation because I think she truly was hurt. And the fact that she was crying in her confessional when she found out that Izzy had proposed, I think it really did hurt her. That's why it hurt my heart so much to see Johnny going back to Chris because she was saying all the right things to him and was like making him like choose her and was like, oh, I see our families getting along. I see this life I envision, this future with you. And I think it was just really wrong of her to do that. But I understand why she did it. It just sucks that it had to play out on television for the world to see, sadly, because she's going to get some judgment from it, you know? A hundred percent. I'm very curious if she's going to be like the Shayna of season five. And I hope not because I do root for Johnny a little bit. Like, I don't think she has bad intentions. And no. um, so we'll just have to see, you know, like what she does in the next set of episodes. But I hope she's not like a home record to um, Izzy and Stacy's relationship. I hope so, too. Yeah. I, I know, obviously, we see in the trailer that they're going to have a conversation for sure, but I'm not sure exactly what's going to transpire from it. Yeah. And Chris comes back, that, too. Chris yeah, comes back, Chris, too. Yeah. And Chrissy and, and Izzy have a conversation, which is, remember, uh, she, Izzy says to him, uh, she told me four times that she loves me. Ooh, Ooh. I think that's going to get Chris heated. <sighs> yeah, that's so going to we'll be... We'll just have to see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so um, our last couple, how do you feel about JP and Taylor? I have no, I literally <laughs> forgot about them. Um, I, okay, so I don't think that they're going to work out, mostly because during the reveal, it felt like Taylor wasn't physically attracted to JP. Like, she made that comment about the gap in his teeth, and I just, once she said that, I was like, I don't know. I just... yeah. But here's the thing. They're very forgettable in my eyes. Like, um, I don't know. I, I forgot that they were in this episode. It, they're kind of like, they got the Danielle and Nick edit from our season where you don't see a lot of them in the pods and they just get engaged early on. And then yeah. they bring the drama in the next sets of episode. And I think it'll be that because you see Taylor crying um, in the trailer for episodes five through eight. Yeah. Yeah. That's the same vibe I got. I think they didn't get much screen time during these episodes because obviously there's a lot more drama going on with the other couples. Um, but yeah, that was an awkward reveal. And I think the, the teeth comment along with pairing that with the awkward silences, I think, um, is going to cause a rift because JP was, you can tell he's visibly nervous during the reveal. He didn't know oh, what sweating. to say. Yeah. He didn't know how to act. And like, she kind of had to carry the team <laughs> during that interaction. So I know. Yeah. So hopefully we'll get to see more of them because yeah, it seems like there's going to be some heated conversations happening. Oh man. But yeah, I, but truly, I, I have no comments no, on them really. The only thing that kind of gives me like, I don't know, the ick about JP is his love for the American flag. Like <laughs> the fact he uses the fact That's he used the American flag as uh like a snot rack, I was like, that is not okay. If you respect the American flag, you don't do that stuff. I don't know. But the fact he I don't know, I've met some guys who are into the like the red, white, blue stuff, and it always is just like why? I mean, he is from the South. He loves... That's true. You know, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's a Houston thing or is it a Texas thing? I have no idea. But the way he like smoothed out the American flag, I was like, what are you doing, bro? <laughs> what are you doing over there? What's um, going on? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, the reason why I wasn't invested in them is because I just can't relate to either of them. Like, yeah. in terms of personality, the, their mm -hmm. characteristics, I just... Yeah. I don't know. So I, I thought that the, I, I mean, I thought that they were sweet and they connected on a level, but I feel like we just didn't get to see much of them. So it's hard to like really connect with them as a viewer. You know what I mean? So yeah, we'll just have to see how, how they play out. Yeah. Well, what a crazy set of episodes. Can we do some, can we do some predictions on these couples? Okay. So first one, Lydia and Milton, what do you think? Like, are they going to end up together? I feel like they're not going to end up together. I don't think, I think that there's going to be a lot more things revealed and there's going to be some tension. 
especially because you see the scenes with um milton's family being like what's she doing with a 24 year old i think there's going to be some drama there yeah okay so initially i want to say no but if you think about their individual personalities i kind of am thinking yes like they'll try to make it work i feel like milton doesn't comes off like he doesn't have a lot of relationship experience and he kind of wants to find love. Yeah. And I feel like Lydia is the same where she's, I feel like Lydia is the same way where she's like desperate for love. So I feel like there's going to be a sense of de desperation to make it work. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if that I, makes I, sense. I get that sense. No, I get that. Yeah. The, you know what? You know, sometimes the foundation of rock is really sturdy. So <laughs> maybe it will work. What's that mean? I don't know. What? They're geologists. I was trying to make a play at rocks. Oh, oh, it's not a saying. You just were trying to make a rock joke. Oh, no. I just make it a random <laughs> thing. <laughs> I was okay, like, what? Else, who else do you think is going to make it? Izzy and Stacy, I feel like, might make it. I think so, too. I like them yeah. together. So far, I like them together a lot. I mean, they're both very good-looking people. They both have very easy personalities, as the show is editing them to have. And mm -hmm. so I could see them kind of like just kind of making it right through with no problems yeah, unless johnny or like lydia come to like ruin <laughs> something <laughs> and they just Stacey might does because stacy does make a fuck boy comment to izzy in the trailer yes. so i'm curious to see what that's about but that seemed more like it was izzy and lydia situation than it was johnny so i was like what is what is happening so i'm yeah oh, man, i'm so excited for these next set of episodes <laughs> okay jp and taylor I feel like they might have a chance if she can get over the whole physical aspect of it. And listen, I think it is important, but uh, I, I don't know. I, I, sh I don't know. The way they were fighting, it seems like they're going to have some problems. <laughs> yeah, literally. Um, okay. I think that this one will be a curveball where the show is editing them to have like a really smooth and easy connection. But I think that JP actually gives Taylor the ick. Like, I don't think they're going to make it. I think Ooh. something about him physically gives her the ick and it's going to bother her. Interesting. Interesting. She was acting just so weird at the reveal in my eyes. Like, I was, I don't know. Like, I feel like she was just responding to the awkwardness, though. Like, it was really like JP was being awkward because he was so nervous. Yeah. And so I think she was just like, how do I like handle the situation you know i felt like at least she was talkative and was like sugar butt oh <laughs> sugar butt was funny that was funny that was really funny no one will but... ever call me that because i have no butt so <laughs> oh that's good anyways that good. okay yeah. um chris and johnny because both of them do come back in the trailer absolutely not they're not working out maybe they'll have a <laughs> resolving conversation but like no that's not going to be a thing yeah i feel like right? i don't know i just don't see the connection between them um so i think they're actually done yeah Aliyah and uche because she does come <sighs> back too and so does he no man <laughs> i just think too much has happened there's too much baggage with lydia right what do you think I hope they actually don't work out. Something about Uche just kind of rubs me the wrong way. Um, and mm, oh, you said Lydia. You said Lydia. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Shit. So let me do it. Okay. Last one. Aliyah and Uche, because both of them, according to the trailer, also come back. Yeah, I really, I don't think that that's going to work out <laughs> because I feel like Aaliyah is just like done with the amount of baggage that comes with Lydia and Uche. Like, it's just too much. It's too recent. I just don't think it's going to work out. What do you think? Free. <laughs> I don't know how you could recover from someone just like leaving you in the pods. Like that's I, a, that true. must have been a shock to Uche. I know that producers probably like set that up to make it more like mm -hmm. dramatic and shocking of having him come yeah. in the pods and telling him that like that's bullshit that they did that, but it makes good <laughs> yeah. for good TV. Um, yeah. But I feel like it's really hard to recover from that. I don't mm -hmm. know. So I, I also agree. I don't see them getting married, but I wonder if they're like dating. Mm. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. I don't think they're going to even date. Why waste your time when you just know it ain't going to work? 
Yeah, that's true. Okay, one last question for you. Who do you think is going to be the villain of this season? Okay, can I... This is like an unhinged statement, but I don't think any of them are going to be villains. I think they all just have like crazy character arcs. And because based on the first four episodes, like my brain is just like all over the place with like who I like, who I don't like, like what's going on, whom, who I'm being judgmental about. And so I just feel like there's not going to be one thing. It's going to be villainous actions. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. So that's kind of what I think. What about you? Do you have like a set person that you think is going to I think Lydia is going to get a better character arc. Like, I think she's going to get a redemption arc like Raven did in season three, where people didn't like her in the first few episodes, and then it changed in the later episodes. So I think that's going to happen to Lydia. That is my prediction. I think that... I hate saying it because I actually do really like her. I think Johnny might get a more unfavorable edit and I feel mm. like Stacy might too, or it might be Lizzie. Who's the villain. I don't know. It, my bet is between yeah. those three, to be honest. Mm, so we'll see. And I think that JP and Taylor will be kind of like the messy couple. Yeah, ju you're right. Cause they just had such a smooth sailing in the first four, like something's happening. In the next yeah. Couple yeah. Episodes. I was like, <laughs> they're definitely not the next Lauren and, and Lauren and Cameron after Tiff no. and Brett in season four, they're like, we're not doing that storyline again. I was like, you know, after they gave Tiff and Brett, the Lauren and Cameron storyline, they're not going to have another one for this season. You're going to have to wait a while. <laughs> Yeah, and not to mention, there's not even a love story like that that exists yeah. in this cast, like whatsoever. So I know this, this season ain't about that perfect fairy tale love story. Let me tell you, no, it's no, not. No. Yeah, love at first pod, ain't it? <laughs> I'm excited though for the next couple episodes. Um, before we wrap up this episode, I just wanted to say, you know, Natalie and I are obviously recapping these at face value and watching the season just like everyone else. Like, let's be mindful that like, we're not here to be unkind at all. Um, we are literally just recapping what we see. So, you know, to the cast out there, if you think that your edit is not right, like reach out to us, <laughs> I kind of want to know. Um, but, uh, let us know what you thought about this episode. What were your thoughts on episodes one through four of this season? Um, let us know on our Instagram page at Out of the Pods. And make sure you leave a review and subscribe. See you next Wednesday for the best recap ever. <laughs> Bye.